This is probably the most exciting update I think I've ever seen with OBS since I've started streaming. OBS 30.2 includes some of the most game-changing features when it comes to streaming and recording. And I really want to share with you how exciting this really is. So let's get into it. I'm going to list these off as they are in the patch notes. The first thing that's up is the Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting. With the Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting, this is going to allow streamers who are streaming to Twitch the ability to send multiple different versions of your stream to Twitch. What's exciting about the Enhanced Broadcast is that because of the way Twitch is, that transcoding is not available to everyone. Now, if you don't know what transcoding is, that is where it takes the video and it will go ahead and resize it for somebody who's viewing it automatically. This is not something that's available to most people. What the enhanced broadcasting is going to do then is send your 1080p 60 frames a second stream, if that's what you're streaming at, it'll send that, but then we'll also send lower quality ones that'll make it easier for people to view you. This is huge for smaller streamers in particular, because if you stream at max settings, there are some people who aren't going to be able to view your video because they can't stream that 1080p 60 frames a second. It's too much for them to download. This will mean on the viewer end, there will be less lag, there will be less loading, buffering. It's going to make it a smoother experience for more viewers. Again, this is an absolutely huge update for people who stream on Twitch like me. Now, there are a few caveats that come with the enhanced broadcasting that I do want to address. First up, you do need to know that you do need to have an NVIDIA GTX 900, GTX 10 series, or an RTX 20 series GPU, or newer. Anything that is older than that will not work. If you're running AMD like I am, you're going to need an RX 6000 series or higher. While this isn't ideal right now because not everybody's going to have the best when it comes to a GPU, this is still a great start and a move in the right direction. In Twitch's release of this, you can even see that they are telling you that yes, you are going to be the one that is providing the transcoding essentially. You are going to be supplying all of the different video formats for Twitch and Twitch will then automatically adjust for your viewer. What is nice is that you are sending information to Twitch for them to more properly adjust the settings to accommodate for your enhanced broadcasting. So when you use the enhanced broadcasting, it will send Twitch your OBS version and audio video settings so that way it knows what your resolution, frame rate, audio channels, all that is so they can more properly adjust to it. It's also going to send the CPU info just making sure that, you know, it's understanding what the limits of your CPU is your GPU info, knowing the model, the memory, driver version, all of that, so it can accommodate and better adjust the settings for what is going to work for your hardware. So when you actually go to set up enhanced broadcasting, it's going to look a little different from what you're normally used to when setting up OBS for streaming. Now, when you have enabled the enhanced broadcasting for Twitch, your panel is going to look like this. You're going to see that it says enhanced broadcasting automatically optimizes your settings to encode and send multiple video qualities to Twitch. Now, what this is going to go ahead and do is you'll have this box, mine is grayed out because I'm currently recording with the OBS that I would be streaming with, but it would have this checkbox where you can enable it. You can also set a maximum streaming bandwidth, so if you wanted to make sure that it is not going to go above a certain amount, it won't go above that. It also gives you the option to set how many different videos are being sent to Twitch. So if you only wanted to have your full HD stream, and then you just wanted to have a standard definition one to save yourself some resources, you can set it this way and make it easier on yourself. For me, I just went ahead and let it just automatically pick for me just to see how my stream would perform. And I put this in a test setting to make sure that I can understand how much my bandwidth is going to look like when doing this. Now, when you come down to your out output setting, it will say at the top, Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting is controlling some of your stream settings, which means it's automatically adjusting. Now, when it comes to recording, will it affect the overall quality of your recording? Probably not. Whatever you're streaming at, whatever is the highest quality you're streaming at, is what's going to get recorded if you do the recording settings. So I don't think it's something that you should worry about, but if you are, you can manually adjust those settings to make sure that it's going to be what you want it to be. Now, another important note I do want to make of this is that it is 
very important to test your bandwidth with this. And if you've never tried this before, there is a way you can stream to Twitch without actually broadcasting. Through my current test OBS that I have up, which is still at 30.1, don't worry, it'll still be the same. If you're on the stream tab, you can see there is a box above where it says Twitch add-ons that you can click and it says enable bandwidth test mode. If you click this, then you click apply. Now you are streaming to Twitch without actually streaming to Twitch. So once we hit okay, what you would do then is just hit start streaming and then you can test the bandwidth. You can test to see how everything's going. Now, one of the best ways you can monitor your bitrate is to have your stats doc open. And if you don't have a stats doc open, you go to docs and then you just come down to where it says stats and make sure it turns on. And it's gonna be this box right here. So it's gonna show you your CPU usage, your disk space available and all that. What you're gonna pay attention to when you're doing this test stream, you're gonna look at the drop frames over the network and you're gonna look at how much is being used for your stream. So here it'll show you in megabytes. Here it's gonna show you the bit rate. This is what you're probably gonna to wanna to pay attention to because this is going to tell you how much upload speed you're using. So with my test, when it came to the enhanced broadcasting, what I found was I was actually uploading about 10 megabytes a second, so 10,000 kilobits per second. That's more than what I'm used to. I'm used to usually seeing the 6,000 that I have it set at and running at. With doing an enhanced broadcast that's sending multiple video files to Twitch, it does require more bandwidth. So what I wind up with is another four megabytes of upload that's going, which roughly is about a 720p video stream. So I'm assuming that maybe it was sending only two and it sent the high quality HD version and then went to the 720 version. Maybe it sent a standard definition version. I'm not quite sure, but do know that you need the bandwidth available to send multiple video files as well, because if your internet upload cannot handle that, it may not be as much of a benefit to you. But again, use the testing to see what your bandwidth is. Now, let me do another, but wait, there's more! OBS 30.2 also added something completely revolutionary when it comes to recording videos, even when it comes to streaming and recording videos. And no matter how you use OBS to save your video, this is going to change your life in so many ways. And what is it that's gonna change your life? It is the hybrid MP4 output format. So what this hybrid MP4 does is it makes a fragmented format of MP4, just like the MKV, where if your stream would crash, it's not going to completely corrupt. But on top of this, this allows for you to insert chapter markers into your video file and save it as an XML that you can then import to whatever video editing software you're, you use. Like me, I use DaVinci Resolve and the importing of this and having those chapter markers absolutely transforms my workflow. Having this feature, these chapter markers in OBS makes it easier for me when I go to edit all my video, much easier for me to go, where was my next point? Or when I'm streaming, I can separate each game by the match itself. So if I was playing something like Apex Legends, I can then put a chapter marker when the match begins, put a chapter marker when it ends, chapter marker when the next match goes, then I can upload by match if I wanted to. Or in my case for Winnable Wednesdays, I would go from game to game. This way, if somebody found one particular game of Jackbox games to be particularly hilarious, they can then view that particular one as many times as they want on YouTube. Chapter markers you can use in so many different ways. Even if you have a clip command put together, you set up a hotkey in OBS and then you can hotkey it. Now you know where it is you have on your recording where those clips are happening, get those high quality clips and, and edit them how you would want to. Unbelievably powerful. This is amazing stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and shout this out. You'll notice down here that I have something called the Stream Up Chapter Marker Manager. And what this does is you can enter in a title for your chapter and you hit save chapter. And now in this recording, I have named a chapter marker to tell me where this was. You could also annotate what it is. If you need to have saved a description of what it is and then save it, you can. And it even comes with your an ability to change the settings as you would like it to. 
So you can say show the previous chapters, add tr a chapter trigger source where you can set up these hotkeys. You can have it, if you want it just in the video file, you can export it, the markers to a file. So sending it to an XML or a .txt. And even if you change from scene to scene, you can make sure that it automatically changes based on the scene that you are changing to. A lot of love to Andy Lippy for making this plugin to go along with OBS 30.2. And if you're not familiar with how to install plugins, I do have a video on that as well. You'll see it up there. Installing plugins really isn't too difficult. It's really just drag the folders into the OBS Studio folder and let it do its thing. Okay, now I don't know if this is actually a new feature in 30.2, but I just found out you can do this. And I have to share it because this actually excited me to no end. So when you have a bunch of docs up and you're just like, wow, there is a lot of space being used. Where do I put all my things? Where, where do I put more docs if I need it? I actually discovered that if you go to docs, and let's say I wanted to add my, my multiple RTMP, well, if I click it, where do I put it? Like, I don't like how it's just shoved over here. I, I, it's already looking cluttered here. Here's a fantastic thing. If you take it and you drop it on top of something, like my stats doc. Well, my stats doc seems like it's disappeared. Actually, if I go down to the bottom where it says stats, I can now make multiple tabs in the same spot with the cow plugin. And that's that stands for quick access utility, not, not, not cow like me. I've installed that. And what I was able to do is I have my sources that I can actually look at and go through and be like, okay, this is what's on this scene. I have one that with the cow, I have put in all the ones that usually cause me some kind of issue, whether it be the input needs to be changed on the fly or I don't have a trigger to make sure something works the way it's supposed to. These are my sources that I typically call my problem children, and I can switch to that if I need to without having to switch into another scene. Again, I don't know how long this has actually been in OBS and been a thing, but the fact that I discovered this, I had to share it because this excited me because my possibilities of being able to open up my docs in a way where I have docs open and then if I don't need to use it, I can hide it and still have access to it quickly without having to go up to the docs tab, drop down, open it up, do, and do all the process. This way it's just a click this tab, click what I need, click back to what I where I was, and making it super easy. I don't know how long this has been in OBS, but, but if this is new, this is amazing. That's all the time I'm gonna have on this video. Make sure you're getting in and experimenting with things, trying things out, make mistakes, it's okay. Making mistakes leads you to understanding stuff way better and you'd be surprised what you can do when you make those mistakes. I will catch you guys on the next video.